have a relationship with your leaders. Your camp leaders, your pastors, your bishops. That's who your relationship is with yourself. Prettying up that old flesh of yours. Scripture said, put ye on your Husha HaMashiach, but you ain't putting him on, you're putting on yourself. You ain't got no shame. Just doing all kinds of wickedness. At the same time, calling on the Father. He got your number, he sees you. Shame on a lot of you. Shame on you descendants of slaves who piss on our suffering with the way you behave yourselves. You have no respect for what we had to go through. Well, sure, you're, you're going through things right now. We won't deny that. But a lot of the things you're going through, you bring it on yourself. You don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You're in the land of your captivity. Well, didn't you know that? You know what? Let me ask y'all something. Let me ask y'all something. How many, how many of y'all out here? This is, I got a good question for y'all today. How many of y'all out here believe that it's right for black men to rape black women? Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Let me tell you something. They got, a, they got an Israelite group out here called GMS. And they believe that it's okay to rape women. These two Negroes that just came up here, they're from GMS, they are in an Israelite group that says it's okay to rape women. Such shameful existences. You call yourselves the awakened children of Israel. What you all fail to realize is that thousands of years ago, our ancestors, they knew who they were too. They knew they were the Israelites. But yet and still, they were asleep. And they were even referred to as generation of vipers. Because the wickedness never stopped. That's why the scripture talked about Judah being worse. Worse than Israel. I must admit, sometimes Judah can be the best, but yet the worst. You got a choice to make, Judah. You have a choice to make. Choose ye this day. Will you be the best or will you be the worst? You call yourself trying to awaken the lost sheep of Israel. All you're displaying is pure darkness. What we see going out is shameful. You are a disgrace to the name of our Father. You have brought shame yet again upon His name with the way you behave, acting like straight up devils. And yet you claim to fear Yah, you don't fear Yah. You open up your mouth with lies, hypocrisy, false witness, backbiting, tail bearing, the most high seas. You may have people who have fallen into your trap and your snare, but you keep forgetting one thing. They don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. The most high seas, your the devilish, deceptive heart. And he says a false witness will not go unpunished. You may have been able to talk your wickedness into the ears of those who would hear you. Calling up this one and calling up that one. Dropping in your poison, venom and your lies. Pulling people under with you with your devilish tongue. But just remember. The judgment of Yah stands sure. His word has gone forth out of his mouth and it shall not return void. Every wicked trap that you have set, you set it for yourself. Every word that you have uttered, 
and lies, deception and manipulation. It's going to revisit you. That's the word. It says a false witness shall not go unpunished. So get ready. We see a lot of that going on among the Israelites, the so-called Hebrew Israelites, as you call yourself. You see, we never called ourselves Hebrew Israelites. That's just the most stuff you done picked up along the way and you think you got something golden. See, you're always picking up masses, crumbs off the floor. Because you don't want what's really yours. You don't want what really belongs to you. You want what the slave master had. Um, I was in Christianity and I stopped going to church for a long time because it didn't really fit my, um, it didn't really fulfill the need of, 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 uh, of information and, and really knowing the truth about it. So um, there came a time when I um, basically was reading Leviticus 26 um, and before the Bible didn't really make much sense to me because I couldn't really imagine who were these people that had the most high on their side and just kept on going on, on turning their back. It didn't really make much sense to me. Who are these people? They don't they seem like a fairy tale type thing. However, when I look at the, how we act as a people and who we are as black people, uh, it really makes a lot of sense. And when I go back to the scriptures and I read back, all of a sudden, everything just opened itself and it became abundantly clear. Um, unfortunately, at the time, there wasn't really a lot of, there wasn't anybody really around to really you know, to, to help with that or anything. So it was a long, uh, um, lonely road. But uh, now, when I watched more brothers, you know, coming into the truth, um, and with the Watchmen and Brother Yerushalayim and, and other brothers that um, bringing it out in a meek and humble way, I mean that that's key to me because I can't uh, I can't listen to somebody that believes that they already all have it all figured out when I know the Most High how it reveals to to His flock, right? So um, this is how I came into the truth. And I appreciate being around my aunts and occultes because it fulfills that, you know, feel, feel, fulfills my ruach. Many Africans and African Americans are awakening to the truth about their heritage, only to find themselves labeled as a cult. The mainstream media has also labeled those that call themselves Hebrew Israelites as a terrorist group. When you view them on the street corners preaching so much hate, it's no wonder people are starting to make these claims. To awaken to your true identity should be a wonderful thing, but to be mistaken as a part of We interrupt our programming. This is a national emergency. Important details will follow. The emergency alert system has been activated.
strong in the most high and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of Yah that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the most high that ye may be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Most High Yah. We welcome you to another Sword of the Spirit audio teaching. We are the servants of Yah, and we humbly greet you in the name of our Master Yeshua. Blessed be the Most High Yah, and peace be unto all whom he has marked with his love from the beginning. Let all hands be lifted up to praises to our Abba Yah, our Father Yah, who created this set apart day, this day that he has sanctified and hallowed and rested in it the Sabbath day that has his name in it. May we highly esteem the Father Yah on this day as he passes by us with all of his glory. With that being said, we greet you in the name of our master, Yeshua HaMashiach. Welcome to today's 190th audio teaching. I can't believe I'm saying 190. I know, I know. Almost 200, we're gonna do something special for the 200 teaching. Um, but my sis in the faith, my co-teacher, she's already in. Shabbat Shalom, sis. How are you? Shabbat Shalom. I'm well. I I can't complain. I'm just <laughs> glad to see another Sabbath. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, had a little bit of, I uh, thank everyone for the patience that they had. Uh, we're actually starting today's uh, audio teaching about three and a half hours late. Um, had a storm here in Michigan, so power was knocked out for a moment, so I wasn't able to upload anything. It just kind of halted everything, and so I just want to thank everyone for the patience that you have had, you know, for us to get back, you know, things going where they need to be, but besides that, I'm doing great. Um, looking forward to the next two weeks so that we can have the summer off. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I can't wait. Yes, so with pay, so we can relax because no one yes. knows unless you're in education. So, besides that, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. I, you know, had some encouragement today. Had a dear sis uh, reach out to me and let me know how uh, blessed she was by the teaching, the Ark and the Covenant that we did. And okay. Uh, yeah, and so uh, 
she's new and, and you know, walking in this truth and she's, and her mom has been listening. So um, just, you know, grateful to be blessing others that, you know, yeah, for God yeah. to allow us to, through the teachings that he gives is, you know, to bless others yeah, that are yeah. in this, uh, mm -hmm. who are, you know, seeking his face and, and need that assistance. And so, you know, it is um, all, we give it all to him. Um, because it is through in and through him that we have our being so we're going to go ahead without further ado and go ahead and get started uh, with today's teaching but before we go into what today's teaching is quickly last sabbath um our, our we it was a webinar teaching as today's teaching will be um last uh sabbath's teaching was entitled faith on trial your faith is on trial mm -hmm. um, this was such such a blessing um to me and i know it was with you uh prina last week because so many yeah. of us say that we have a faith we say that we follow y'all we say that we're serving the y'all but then many people compromise um on their faith um you know when it comes to their faith and what they say they believe in they don't stand on it and so <laughs> we, we did uh, uh we were able to peel back the layers of the heart revealing through the scriptures the truth of, of what many people say their faith are is this really your faith if you say you're serving yah then there should be a certain stand mm -hmm. that you should take on specific issues as it pertains to the bible we are for yah whatever yah is for we are for whatever where whatever he is against we're against and yes. we don't have to walk in in hatred with mm -hmm. anyone but we stand for what the truth is and we are, we do not compromise on the truth and that's what we have to be as believers, yes. your faith is your faith, no matter even if you're facing that fiery furnace like the three Hebrew boys, you know what I'm yes. saying? And so whatever it is, you're standing on it, just like Job and many others in the scriptures who stood on their faith and they believe what the word of Yah said, even all the way up into death, which is going to be what the two witnesses, Israel and the house of Israel, house of Judah will have to do in, in this end times. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> with today's uh, teaching, again, today's teaching is entitled, Am I My Brother's Keepers? Tainers of the Faith versus Walking in Love. And so, as you look, look here on the screen, the description, um, following the murder of his brother Abel, and we find in Genesis uh, chapter 4, verse 9, that the father Yah asked him a question following this murder. Where is your brother Abel? And Cain responds with the question. He instead of answering Yah's question, he answered Yah's question with the question, and he asked, Am I my brother's keeper? And so today we're going deep into this one verse. This one verse. I would not have known that so much could come out of this one verse. And I'm excited about bringing this to you today. But we're going to study this infamous response that we find from Cain in, in Genesis 4 and 9. And so why? It says that the father Yah said that the blood of Abel cried to him from the ground. And so why did the blood of Abel cry out from the ground? What does that mean? Okay, y'all gave me a revelation this morning concerning this, um, where I had called Prina said we're gonna have to start it a little bit an hour late. <laughs> Didn't know the storm was coming and the yeah. was going out. I'm like, we doing this. I don't care what time we start. We're doing this teaching today. But as um, but you know, the question I'm gonna ask today is, are we as brethren in the faith? Are we responsible for one another? Okay. Do we have the power to save those who do not want to be saved? Are we to use shameful absurdity and bully tactics to bring in the unbeliever? Even more so, is everyone our brother? Okay? Note that the scriptures tell us that we're commanded to walk in love with our brother. But what does this mean? How can this be applied today? Okay. We're going to go deep into all, we're going to answer all of these questions. We're going to go into a deeper study of Genesis 4 and 9, but we're also going to bring awareness to those who have become tainers of the faith, okay? Just like you heard in the beginning of the audio, 
clip uh, at the beginning of this teaching, you know, those who are calling themselves Hebrew Israelites. We're getting ready to go into this. Those who are standing on the corners, cursing people out, you know, standing out here, um, you know, like the gentleman said, saying that you can rape our black women, you know, all kind of foolishness and so many false doctrines is coming out. We want to clear up any disparity today. We want to make sure that by the end of this teaching, did you know that those people who are doing that, they're spoilers. They're tainers of the faith. They're agents that are being paid, okay, to go out there and to do what they're doing. They are reprobates. They do not represent the father and those whom he is truly awakening. Because he says we're supposed to awaken, but we're awakened to righteousness, not awakened to sin and lead people astray and make his name blaspheme before the nations. We're gonna, we have a, a video that we're gonna play later. Um, from a very, you know, reputable uh, teaching ministry. But this particular video, um, I do not, I agree with the things that they're saying. Pretty much because of the those who are tainters, spoilers, those who are tarnishing the name of Yah with their shenanigans, their rhetoric, their hate speech, the things that they're teaching, people have called the, are now calling the, the name of Yah and the faith of our Messiah a cult. The, the people who are truly the true descendants, blood descendants of the scriptures now, people are saying that we're not them. They wanna separate from the true faith because of those who are standing out here with Ninja Turtle outfits, super superhero gear, with, with all the different guys on, all that one, like I said last week, they got all, all, everything on, everything they think is a part of our culture, we got to put all of it on at one time. Can't even stand up straight. As long as we got it on, we can look Hebrew. <laughs> this is what we see. These are the ones who are out here doing this. We want to make it clear that we have nothing to do with them. They have nothing to do with the true faith of our father. And they are those who the father, and they're just like the Pharisees, okay? They're just like the Pharisees, the whom he rejected and said, you are of your father, the devil. We're going to address him. We're going to just clear up some things today. But we're going to also address the difference between walking in love, judging, and knowing when to walk away from those who willingly choose their own path to stray from the truth of our Father Yah and His Word. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to reveal some truth. We're going to clear up some things. But am I my brother's keepers? Tainters of the faith versus walking in love. And so we're going to begin with Genesis 4 and 9. Okay. Are we our brother's keeper? Let's begin reading here, and I'm going to start reading um, at verse 8, and we're going to go down to 12. And Cain talked with his brother Abel and said, let us go out into the field. And it happened as they were in the field. Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And Yah said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And Yah said, what have you done? The voice of the blood of your brother cries to me from the ground. And now you are cursed more than the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will not again give its strength to you. You shall be a vagabond and a fugitive on the earth. So, we're going to examine Genesis 4 and 9. We're going to really examine this today because in the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned against the father, Yah, and they ate from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, that tree that the father, Yah, said that they were not to touch, 
And immediately following the transgression against the father, okay, the first thing Adam did, because Adam, we know Prina, he was the head. Yeah. Okay. He was responsible for his wife. We know that Adam, instead of him, when y'all came, when y'all was walking, it says in the cool of the garden, okay, and who did he call first? He he called Adam. Yes, he did. He didn't call Eve. He mm -hmm. called Adam. And the first thing Adam did, instead of taking responsibility for what had happened, what did he do? He shifted the blame. He blamed Eve and said, oh, no, um, I was transgressed because this, this woman that you gave me, yeah. she gave it to me. And I, you know, this is what we often do as believers. And this is what we get to saying: two wrongs don't make a right. We know that we have done wrong, but instead of taking accountability for our part, we want to shift the blame and say, oh, no, it was because of this or because of that. And y'all's eye, sin is sin. If he's told you not to do something, is he's not going to say, oh, well, you get a pass because, you know, this happened or that. No. We, when he says thou shall not murder, then he meant what? Thou shall not murder. When he told them you shall not touch the tree and not your good and evil, that he meant that. And he told them the consequences of what would happen if they did that. And so this is what the same thing that we see going on here as we saw with Adam and Eve. Cain, once the transgression was committed, he just like, when y'all asked him, where's your brother? Well, he didn't, he didn't blame his brother or anything, or he didn't blame Yah, but he answered, am I my brother's keeper? Am I, am, am I my brother's keeper? And so we're going to go into this as far as not taking responsibility and accountability. What does this mean? So according to the Blue Letter Bible, 8401, keeper means to guard, to watch, to save, to protect. It says watchman, to regard. Okay, so to be a keeper, when Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? He's like, am I guarding him? Like pretty much, am I his babysitter? Am I supposed to be guarding him? Am I supposed to be watching him? Am, am I responsible for saving him? What, am I supposed to be protecting him? Like a watchman? Am I to regard him? To regard means to care for, to be concerned about, and to take heed. The source.com for regard says to give care or thought to. It also says to regard means to respect, to show tender, loving care, and to be cautious. And so Cain was in essence telling the father, yeah, look, am I supposed to care about him? I'm not my brother's keeper. I, he gave no care. He had no thought. He, he had no respect. Definitely did not walk in tender, loving care. And he was not cautious. And so as believers, when we... Um, are interacting with the body and one another. It is expected that we guard one another, that we protect, that we have regard for one another, that we show care, that we're concerned about one another, that we give care, we have thought. Like when I think about what I'm going to do or what I'm going to say, especially if I have to come to someone to share the truth or to warn, I give care and thought to that person and I'm careful how I speak. I'm careful of the way that I approach them. I may, I have to sometimes pray. You might even have to fast and ask the Father God to lead you and give you the words that you may need to speak, to be able to speak to this person in a loving way, in a way that they will accept it or, you know, be able to will, be willing to hear you. And you have to be cautious. You don't just, you know, Prina and I are our best friends, and it's no secret. 
And so if I have to come to her, I'm cautious. You know, I put a pause on it. I just, as soon as I think of something, oh, let me just come to you and just spew it out anyway and oh well, because I'm sharing the truth. No, because if you have care and concern as brethren, we are supposed to be cautious with one another. We are supposed to guard and watch over one another and to protect one another. We are supposed to be the watchmen. And so let's go to verse 10. Genesis 4 and 10 says, when Yah said to Cain, what have you done? The voice of the blood of your brother cries to me from the ground. And now he says, you are cursed more than the ground which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. He says, when you till the ground, it will not again give this strength to you. You shall be a vagabond and a fugitive on the earth. So what does the voice of the blood crying from the ground mean? What does that mean? The Father Yah had me go into a study of the word ground. I would have never thought, okay, let's see what ground meant. You know, I'm thinking it's the ground. You know, it's the land, you know, where the dirt and the soil. But Blue Letter Bible for ground, it says land as general tilled or yielding substance. Land as general tilled yielding substance so immediately as i looked at the word yield i said you know i know what yield means but i want to have you know some witnesses so the source.com says for yield means harvest it said it means earn it means output and return and as I was sitting in the bed this morning, you know, finishing this up, and immediately what, what came in my spirit was when he says that your brother cries to me from the ground. And when I saw in Blue Letter Bible that it says the ground means a yielding substance, something that yields to something. This is what it gave, to, what was given to me. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Yah is eternal life in Yeshua Messiah, our master. The wages of sin, it says that the ground is a yielding something. And thesaurus.com says means to yield, means to earn. It means to earn. It is the output. The wage, when you go to work, you are earning a wage, are we not? And whatever it is that you earn, that's what that's what will decide what your wages will be on payday. If you have, um, you get paid every two weeks, and let's say you have, you missed three days because you were sick, you didn't have any time. Well, your earnings or your wages that you get two weeks from now will not cover those two weeks. You'll be three days short if you get what I'm saying, and so. The yield is the output. It's the return of what you put in. What goes into the ground is what will come out. Is what you put, what you put in is what you will get in return. What hours you put in at work is what you will, what your return be. Whatever you work for that entire year when tax season come around, that's will be, you know, will determine what your return. And so the father was telling me when the when his ground when his blood when Abel's blood hit the ground and what rose up in my spirit is like this is what was put in. And so Genesis 2 and 17 because I'm giving you two precepts everything shall be established by two or three witnesses according to Torah. Genesis 2 and 17 says, you must, Yah told Adam and Eve, you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. For the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. The wages of sin is death. This is what Adam and Eve yielded. This is what 
Cain yielded. He murdered. He transgressed the law of Yah. He committed murder. He shed innocent blood. The ground, according to Blue Letter Bible, as used in its proper context in Genesis 4 and um, 9, 10 and 11, is a yielding substance. This was the harvest. This was what was earned. This was the output. So in return, the wages of sin is death. This is what he meant when he said that you're the voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. And he says, now you are more cursed than the ground which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood. It received. Are you looking at this, Prina? You see this? It says yeah. you received your brother's blood. This was what the blood of Abel is what was put into the ground. This is the reason why his blood was crying out from the ground. There is life, according to scripture. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. They go and ponder on that for a second. Life is in the blood. For the wages of sin is death. So what the ground received or, or and what it gave back was what was put in it. What was spilled in it and the life that was in it spoke from the ground. So when we look at Hebrew, something to kind of help us, and I want <clears throat> to help us if you're still not c clear. Hebrews 12 and 24, it gives us a better understanding of what took place. And what I'm speaking of when I say that the voice cried, Hebrews 12 and 24, because he said, what better things did the blood of Yeshua speak than Abel's blood? It says, and to Yeshua, the mediator, Paul is speaking, and to Yeshua, the mediator of a renewed covenant, and to the sprinkling of his blood, which speaks better things than Abel's did. So what is he talking about? That according to Yeshua, who is the mediator of a new covenant or the renewed covenant that we will once again renew, it says the sprinkling of his blood spoke better things than Abel's did. Because we know that our Messiah's blood was spilled, correct? His blood was spilled, just as Abel's was spilled. But the scripture says in Hebrews 12 and 24 that our Messiah's blood when spilled, spoke better things than Abel's blood did. So what better things did the blood of Yeshua speak than Abel's blood? We know Abel's blood was speaking revenge and justice. Because he says that your, blood, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. He was speaking, speaking revenge and justice. Doesn't this sound very familiar in the book of Revelations? Because I, this scripture I was going to include in here. But when my power and stuff went out and it threw me off track and I completely forgot after it you know, came back up to put it in here, but our praises be to Yah that he's bringing it to everything to my remembrance. Remember in the book of Revelation that those who were already kill and for his for our messiah's namesake say they were also crying it says that their blood was crying out too they were also crying out when 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 you gonna you know give us justice when you gonna repay for for everything that was done to us and he said look you hold on just a little while longer because you have some more of your brethren who are about to be beheaded they're about to be killed they were speaking, what was the blood speaking? Abel's blood was speaking revenge and justice. But Yeshua's blood was speaking mercy and forgiveness. This is the reason why Paul is saying in Hebrews 12 and 24, 
that the sprinkling of our master Yeshua's blood spoke better things than Abel's blood was speaking. Abel's blood, along with our brethren in the book of Revelation, were speaking revenge and justice, repay. Whereas Yeshua's blood, when spilled, it spoke mercy and forgiveness. Forgiveness of your sins and mercy on those who would repent, who would confess their sins and repent, meaning to change their mind, turn away from sin, because change because to repent does not mean to turn away from sin. It means to change your mind. When you automatically change the way you think, you're you automatically turn away from sin because it says that our map that it says that Yah repented that he had made man. It didn't mean that he he needed to repent. He's not a man where he can lie. He does not sin. It meant that he had just changed his mind. That's why he destroyed the previous earth. He changed his mind about them. Okay, he he had a different mindset and 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 as far as how he was going to do this over again. So Yeshua's blood was speaking mercy and forgiveness. Are you getting this, Trina? Yes, ma'am. And so Luke 23, I want to read a precept. Luke 23, verse 34 says, and Yeshua said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing. This is what our master said in Luke 23, verse 34, when his blood was being spilled, just before they killed him, it says that in the previous verse, and then right here, when you get to verse 34, it says that he prayed to the father while he was being killed. Just before he gave up his breath, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know that they're killing the son of Yah. They have no idea. This is what Paul means in Hebrews 12 and 24, where he says that Yeshua's blood spoke better things than Abel's. Did. Abel was thinking um, revenge, <laughs> justice, just like our brethren in Revelations, they were saying the same thing. When you gonna revenge and repay for what they did? Yeshua said, forgive them. Father, he prayed for them. He prayed for his enemies. Like the scriptures tell us to. Matthew 5, 44, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is what he, our master Yeshua told us to do. This is what is hard for a lot of us. When your enemies are persecuting you to get down on your knees and pray for them, because most of them are doing it when they're coming against you. And if you truly serve Yah, they're coming against him. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have no clue that they might be like Miriam, that when he, you know, turned her leprous white as snow because she spoke against Moses. They don't know. They don't have no idea. She ain't had no idea until she was turned white. So the, our master Yeshua said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is the command. This is what our master Yeshua did while they was killing him just before he died. He prayed for them, forgive them. His blood spoke mercy and forgiveness. Why? Let's reread Romans 6 verses 22 and 23. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to Yah, meaning you are now a servant to Yah, he says the fruit you reap leads to holiness. The fruit that you reap from the ground leads to holiness, leads to life. And what does he say? And the outcome is eternal life. The outcome. We just got finished learning according to Blue Letter Bible at thesource.com, what the outcome is. Outcome is the ground, aka what you yield. That's why he had me do that study. I didn't even, I did this study before I even got to Romans 6 20. I didn't even know that was even in there. Outcome means the ground. That's why his blood was screaming or crying out from the ground. It's what he yielded, it's what he earned. He says, if you, if your fruit 
if the, if the fruit that you reap leads to holiness, that means the outcome, as it says at the end of verse 22, the outcome is eternal life. The ground will yield life, not death. That's why he said that you, 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 now you more cursed than the ground that received your brother's blood at your hand. That's what the ground received. It wasn't holiness, it was wickedness that the ground received when um, Abel's blood was spilled. Are you understanding this? Outcome, ground, what it means, yield. It says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of Yah is eternal life in Yeshua Messiah, our master. This is what? Romans 6 and 23, or yeah, Romans 6, 23 and verse 22, really, is the precept to Hebrews 12 and 24. His blood spoke better things than Abel. The wages of sin is death, but through our master Yeshua, the gift of Yah is what? Eternal life. What does all of this mean? It's, it's the universal truth. Is what, what the scripture says is what? That sin has consequences. Sin has consequences, and the consequences of sin is what? Death. That's it in a nutshell. That's what this the whole gist of this is. Y'all did not curse Cain. Cain cursed Cain. It, the ground is he said is more is more cursed. He says, you are more cursed than the ground that, that opened up to receive the blood of your brother whom you killed. Why is he saying this? Because sin has consequences. Yah wants to save us from the law of sin and death. That's why he sent his son, Yeshua, to die for us. That's why he sent him. When you read Romans chapter eight, verses one through three, he didn't send his son to free us from his law, from his teachings and his instructions, from his commandments. Romans eight, verses one through three tells you that our father, Yah, sent his son, Yeshua, to die for us, to set us free from the law of sin and death. That's the law that he set us free from. That's the law that he nailed to the stake or the tree. The law of sin and death, not his commandments. Sin has consequences, and the consequences of sin is death. So this is the reason why Yeshua's blood, when his blood was spilled, his blood spoke better things because his spilling of his blood meant, now there is mercy for those of you who sin against me. There is now forgiveness for those of you who confess your sins and repent. You can be forgiven. His, the spilling of his blood means now the veil is rent. The veil is torn. That which kept me and you apart, that, that's, that's now no longer, that's removed. There's nothing else that can, can separate us from being together. We can, I can now take my bride back that I entered into this covenant with. We, I, can, I can now recon, reconcile with you. And, and come back together with you. If you just cleanse yourself and begin to walk in the newness of life and the gift of my son who paid the price. He paid the price, his blood. Now, by his blood, you are able to enter in. You are now able to enter into my presence, that secret place. The holies of holies. Are, is, are you seeing how this is all just coming back around? Yeah. This is awesome. I never I understood how much we get pulled out of this one, you know, Genesis 4 and 9. All of yeah. this, the difference between Abel's blood and what Abel's blood spoke and what the spelling of Yeshua's blood spoke. Mm -hmm. And so he says, what have you done? The voice 
of the blood of your brother Christ and me from the ground, and now you are more cursed than the ground, which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand, which you, he says, when you till the ground, it will not give its strength to you. You shall be a vagabond and a fugitive. And I believe this is already here. So let's go to the next one. So the ground is no more. Just like what Adam and Eve, when they say in the ground, he says, now you're going to have to work. It's not going to just give you, you know, the, the power and the strength that they had before and just come up and just give you flowers without you tilling. Now you're going to have to work for it. Then you have cursed the ground. When there's so much, when there has been, a lot of times the land, and the scriptures will vomit you out and it vomit the people out when there's so much sin and so much blood that has been spilled. We know this nation got it coming because there's been so much blood spilled on this land, so much blood of our ancestors is crying to Yah from the ground. You know, that blood, that blood defiles the land. Yeah. The land is defiled. We did a teaching on that land is defiled. When the land becomes so defiled, it will vomit the people out. You will just see some massive storm come and people are just removed. So part two of Am I My Brother's Keeper? Let's, let's talk about judgment, sharing truth, and when to walk away. Ezekiel chapter three, verses 10 and 11 reads, and, and Yah said to me, son of man, um, and my words which I speak to you, receive into your hearts and hear with your ears and go. Come to the exiles, to the sons of your people, and speak to them, and say to them, so says the Most High Yah, whether you will hear or whether you will forbear. So when Yah has called for us to speak and to share the truth, he's not saying, oh, well, you can speak to them only if they, you know, <laughs> if they're going to listen to you or if they're going to accept it. He says, <clears throat> go tell them what I said. Go warn them whether they're going to listen to you or not. Mm -hmm. He's, whether they're going to listen, because he said, you know, they are stiff-necked people. <clears throat> he said, they're not going to listen to you. He said, but go tell them anyway. You're going to be a witness against them, and they're going to know that in the end, when this is all said and done, they're going to know that a prophet was among them. Oftentimes, he knows that they're not going to listen. That your job is not to go there and to try to convince them. Your job is to go and be a witness. Oftentimes, when you're going to share truth, he already knows that they're not coming, that they're not going to receive it, that they're going to reject it. But your job is to be the vessel, to do what he told you to do. And whether, like he says in Ezekiel 3 and 10, 11, whether they hear you or not, doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm not concerned with whether they listen to you or not. I need you to go and tell them. Ezekiel 3, verses 17 through 19 reads, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel, and hear the words of my mouth, and warn them for me. And my saying to the wicked, surely you shall die, and you do not warn him, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, okay? Cain said, look, I am, am I my brother's keeper? What was one of the key words there? Was not save one of them? Uh, am I his savior? Am I to save my brother? Is that, is that, that don't have anything to do with me. Like some people say, I'm just worried about myself as long as me and mine. No, that is not the heart of a true servant of Yah. You are, as we learn in the definition, to be concerned. You yeah. are to regard. You are to give care or thought to what your if your brother and sister is saved or not. He says, if you do not speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, he, the wicked, shall die in his iniquity. That means they're going to die in their sins. He says, but if they die in their sins, you don't warn them from their wicked ways to save their life. He says if they die in their iniquity, which is their sin, because that's what iniquity means, sin, lawlessness, he says, then I will require his blood at your hand. Just like he told Cain. 
his blood is is spilling is, is crying to me from the ground at your hand i'm gonna require his blood at your hand and you because you have warned the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his way he the wicked shall die in his iniquity but you will have delivered your soul so you are delivering your own soul by warning your brother or sister if they're doing wickedness okay if you warn them and they don't want to hear it they say get out of my face screw you i don't want to hear it okay fine keep it moving you've done your job you have delivered your soul by being obedient but if they're sinning and they have no way of knowing what the truth is or they could maybe they would have repented like uh with jonah and nineveh he didn't yeah, want to yeah. go and that's how he ended up in the big fish which we all believe to be a whale it doesn't say that but that's the only fish i can believe is large enough to swallow you know a human but the whole the whole point is this jonah when he wanted to get out of there and when he got out of there, he went and did what y'all told him to do. And guess what? The whole city repented mm -hmm. and were saved. So you can't just say, oh, well, they look like they ain't gonna never be saved. Oh, such and such. Oh, Keisha, she'll never be saved. Oh, uh, Sherry, oh, she'll never be saved. Oh, Linda, she'll never be saved. So we can forget about, you know, trying to sh sh share the truth with them. How do you know? Maybe they haven't heard it from you. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 33 says the same thing as a big as Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel 33, 6 and 7 says, But if the watchman sees a sword coming and does not blow the ram's horn, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes a soul from them, he is taken in his iniquity. He says, But I will require his blood from the watchman's hand. And you, son of man, I gave you as a watchman to the house of Israel. And you shall hear the word from my mouth and warn them for me or from me. So the Father Yah is not silent as it pertains to our job. If we see our brother and sister walking in um, iniquity, if they're sinning, he says that you are to warn them. You are to blow the ram's horn, blow the trumpet, cry aloud, spare not. He says that the sword is coming and they're taking away in their sins and they die in their sins and you didn't warn them now you're it's the same thing as if you murdered them that's the same thing as hating your brother seeing sin on them and allowing it to remain on them and not saying anything we're not supposed to tolerate it but if you warn them and you tell them the truth and they don't and you show them in the scripture and they still want to keep being wicked and they still don't want to listen now that's on them you are not responsible at that point. Ezekiel 33, verse 8 and 9. When I say to the wicked, O wicked one, surely you shall die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked one from his way, and that wicked one shall die in his iniquity, he says, but I will require his blood from your hand. But you, if you warn the wicked from his way to turn from it, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity meaning he shall die in his sins, but you have delivered your soul. Say to them as I live, declares the Most High Yah, I do not delight in the death of the wicked. Yah does not delight. He does not delight in the death of the wicked. And we are not to celebrate at the downfall of our enemies, at the downfall of the wicked. We should be mourning for them. Because we know where their soul is going. This is not a time to celebrate. We're not supposed to be celebrating the, the death of someone. Again, say to them as I live, declares the Most High Yah, I do not delight in the death of the wicked. So if Yah does not delight in the death of the wicked, then what do we have? What do why do we have to go around here uh, boasting and 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 uh, being happy when we see our enemies downfall. He says, except in the wicked turning from his way and so to live. So the only thing that he says he delights in is for when the wicked turn from his wicked way so that they may live. 
turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Yah is pleading to you. Why will you die, Israel? And so, as we continue with part two of Am I, My Brother's Keeper, continuing with how do we share the truth of Yah's word versus judgment? where it says you can't judge me because people are so quick that you can't judge me. How do we share the truth? Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, meaning anyone is caught sinning against the Father's laws, his word, he says, you who are spiritual should restore him in a what? Spirit of gentleness. You are to restore your brother in love. You when, you, when people ask you, what is the hope as the scripture says is in you? When people see me excited, pe I had people inbox me on Facebook or send me an email or call me up on the phone or text me. They want to know what's the hope in you? What's your belief? Why do you feel that, you know, why do you post, why did you post this? Or what, did, what do you mean by that? They want to know. And they didn't come to me in a belligerent way or in a disrespectful. They wanted to sincerely know. And a few of those people now are serving y'all wholeheartedly. And it's because they didn't see me on TV, to, on, on, not on TV, but on, on Facebook or on YouTube talking about hate the white man. And nobody going, everybody except for the, the Israelites going to hell. They didn't see me on Facebook posting scriptures one day and then posting and then cursing and using profanity the next day. They didn't see me posting scripture one day and then posting videos and pictures of Beyonce and Jay-Z and Rihanna and Lil Wayne. You know, you have to restore your brother or sister who are transgressing with a spirit of gentleness. Again, that goes back to regard. Am I my brother's keeper? That's what then Cain said that. Am I to have a care or thought? Am I responsible for saving him? Am I responsible for regarding him? Am I to, to care and be be concerned? Am I to be cautious? You're going to hear me out throughout this teaching continue to go back to those definitions of what it means, first of all, for ground and how we're to regard and care for one another as per the scriptures. He says, keep watch on yourself unless you too be tempted. Carry one another's burdens so that you fulfill the law of the Messiah. We are required to carry one another's burdens. Why? Because did not the blood of our Messiah that was spilled on the ground, was he not carrying all our burdens? Did he not take on the law of sin and death? Did he not take on all of our sins, the judgment that was on us? Did he not take it upon himself? Did he not become the sacrifice that we may not become the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. We are to care about our brother's burdens. If you, we are many members of the body of the Messiah. If one member is hurting, the scripture says, and all of us are hurting. If one member is joyful and you have something good going on for you, and you're rejoicing, we're all supposed to be excited and rejoice with you. If you have something good going on and you got a, a brother or sister who is jealous of you, who are envy of you, who are talking about you, backbiting, slandering you behind your back and then grinning in your face and acting like they're your friend, they're not rejoicing with you when good things happen. You get that great job, you got to increase, you get something, whatever the case, however you, the Father blesses you. You have an increase in anywhere in your life. He opens up a door, anything. You get married, you, you excited, and, and that person can't even share in the excitement and rejoice with you. That's not a friend. That's not a true brother or sister. Yeah. We are to carry one another's burdens. When Prina is sad, I'm sad. If I'm joyful, she's joyful. We bear one another's burden. If I have a need, I will give to her. If she has a need, she'll give to me. Y'all willing. 
You understand? We're supposed to be at thought or care. We're supposed to be constantly praying for one another. Some things doesn't always equate to money. Yeah. You might have it and you might not. But what you can do, you should. Yeah. And I, I can I just say something, um, Sister Time. Mm -hmm. uh, the spirit of gentleness, that, that is one of the fruits of the spirit that yeah. we are required to yes. have. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. And Thank so you. for that to be there, I mean, that is just like showing you right here that, you know, we have to come in love and in gentleness. You, you, you can't come rah-rah and think yes. somebody is going to um, listen to you because yeah. you're going to put them on defense. And, yes. and and their next thing is to defend themselves and protect themselves and they gonna back away. And so you could have won a soul. Yes. Um, but with your rah rawness, you can you can very much well lose a soul. Yeah. I mean, what do you say like when we were going to witness the one time and it was just like you can catch more um yeah. with honey than vinegar. And I was yeah. like, okay, I got it. And I kind of changed that we changed what our what was on our t-shirt. Yes. You have to be like Paul would would speak to those sinners, but he could become one. That doesn't mean he was becoming a sinner, but whoever you had to be for you to be able to relate. Yeah. You gotta be able to be flexible. And I'm not, I didn't say compromise. Yeah. I said be flexible. You have to have a variety of ways mm -hmm. that you might be able to witness. You have to have a care or thought for the person. It doesn't matter, okay, if the person is a Christian, the person is in, you know, in a different religion. If I'm trying to witness the truth of the Father's word through the scripture, I give a, a thought or care. This is my family members, friends. Of course, I'm going to care. I'm not just going to come to them any kind of way. And even more so with people that you don't know, because they're going to let tell you to the, take a hike. Yeah, want to hear anything that you say? <laughs> they can be like, whatever. <laughs> like, by Felicia, that's what you're gonna hear. They yeah. don't like to hear nothing you saying because you sound crazy right now. Mm -hmm. They can't receive you. Yeah, yeah. With 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 all of the stuff that many of our brethren, we you we Israel, you're too much. Yeah. You're overbearing. You're overbearing. You're overwhelming. No one can receive you. You can witness the truth of the Father's word and not have on a superhero outfit. <laughs> and you got to remember, too, you was once in that same boat with the Christianity yes. or Muslim yes. or whatever, you know, whatever you were at. And, you know, you have to remember who witnessed to you and yes. how that seed was planted in you. Yes. You know, you can't forget where you came from and how the Most High um, opened your eyes. Yes. You and know, you, you, know, you can still be blind. You, you the guru of uh, being an right. Israelite now because you came, You like I said, you just took your buns out the oven last night. Now you are an elder. You teaching today. <laughs> it ain't been exactly. 24 hours, you know? Exactly. Let's look at the top. It says James 4, I'm sorry, James 5, 19 and 20 says, my brothers, if one of you shall wander from the truth and someone shall bring him back, mm -hmm. consider this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. When you ever turns a sinner from the error of his ways, but you do it in love. Look at the people here. You don't have to. Ha you don't have to have on no get up. You don't have to have your hair wrapped. I mean, if that's what you choose to do, that's fine. Paul said these were not our customs, and our people still. Well, however, the the point is this: you don't. You can just. You're not coming in there with no Luke move something dress on and no uh ten inch heels and think you getting ready to convince anybody of anything when they looking at you like you need to be sliding down a pole. Just dress <laughs> regular. Have on you because you have to be careful. You're coming yeah. to people who don't know mm -hmm. who you are, what you're about. When you come, like I mean, of our brethren stand out there on the corner screaming at each other, got all the guys on, got all this. They can't, like I said, you're overbearing. You're out there with a bullhorn. You're screaming in their ears. You're calling them out their names. You're telling them they're going to hell. That's not a spirit of gentleness. That's yeah. not a spirit of love. And you're not exhibiting the fruits of the spirit. 
No one is going to receive you. Like I said earlier, they're going to tell you to take a hike. They're not going to listen to anything that you're saying. You have to take into account, you have to regard, you have to give thought and care to, and you have to move with caution. Like the scripture says, for the definition again for, for ground, you have to give caution. Who is my audience? Who am I speaking to? I'm not trying to run them off. If somebody come to me with a KKK outfit on, but they got the Bible in their hand, tell them they want to preach the truth to me. Do you think I'm really getting ready to listen to that? I'm getting ready to run, first of all, because I don't know what, that's not, that's not going to put me at ease. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, yeah. you know better because you're coming, preaching and teaching hate, just like they are. Nothing is different about you. Yeah. Yeah. You got on a different outfit. That's it. That's it. Nothing is different. So we are to come in love with a spirit of gentleness. We are to tell them in love and, and what the hope is. Explain to them what the hope is. But it's the way that you do it. It's the way that you share the truth. He, we are going over through scripture. How we're to share the truth. How do you restore a brother who maybe they were you know, in the truth, and maybe they've been going off lately. Maybe they're doing things that they don't know, because as we grow in this walk, we learn every day. You know, none of us yeah. are without sin. So I'm still learning every day things that I, last year that I thought wasn't a sin, I'm finding out this year is a sin. Mm -hmm. And as you grow and learn, but if a brother and sister come to me, and they got the Bible, and they're telling me, or they did some research, and they can show me where I'm in error, I'm, as a servant, I should be listening because this brother or sister is not trying to judge me. They're yeah. trying to restore my soul that I can be saved. They're trying to, as it says in James 5 and 20, to turn me from an error and turn me from a multitude of sins that could be against me. They're mm -hmm. trying to save my soul. Yeah. This whole, you can't judge me. First of all, we don't even know what it means to judge. The body, the body does judge one another. We don't judge those that's outside of the faith, but those that are in the faith, if you claim that you a believer, you and you claim you a servant of God, that you believe that the Bible is authoritative word of the Father, and that you and you serving him, and you love him, and you know him, yes, we have every right, because that's part of it. We warn, we urge, we, 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 we don't condemn, but we, we restore the brethren, we use the scriptures. To restore them, and we come with a spirit of gentleness in love. Why does he say with a spirit of gentleness? Because he knows if you're harsh, you too much, they're gonna do what? They're gonna reject it. They're not gonna listen to anything. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna listen to anything you're saying. Mm -hmm. You might as well be Charlie Brown, what mother talking about walk walk, because that's why exactly how you sound at that point. Mark 6, verses 10 through 11. And he said to them, Wherever you, whenever you enter, this is just Messiah, whenever you enter into a house, remain there until you go out from there. And as many as will not receive you, nor hear from you, having gone out from there, what does he say to do? Shake off the dust and under your feet for a testimony to them. You are have now, as a Messiah said, you're going to be a witness against them. Everything we say and do, and I tell my son all the time, everything you say and do, you're being recorded. The angels, they're watching you. You're being recorded. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everything you say and do, you that's why you say you got to give an account for every word, everything you say. Mm -hmm. When the books are open, what books are you think they talking about? The books of remembrance. For everything that you have done, just in case you forgot, I got you. Let, let's open up the books. So when you go and witness as it pertains to sharing the truth, when it says, let me say, go back. When it says you can't judge me, when people say that this is what sinners say when they want to continue doing what they're doing mm -hmm. without impunity. This is what they want. This is what they want. Judgment begins with the house of Israel. And we, the body, do judge one another. When he says you don't judge unless you be judged, He's saying, look, you can't be telling me don't, don't lie or don't steal when you stealing. 
You you can't tell me don't fornicate and you commit adultery. You're doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. Don't call the the, the pot can't be calling the cattle uh flat. You can't be throwing a rock and you live in a glass house. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. That's what he is saying. Judge, let ye not be judged. Don't be get don't get caught doing the same thing that you're trying to crucify and kill someone. This is what the Pharisees did. They were always trying to look for a way to accuse. They were the accuser of the brethren. They were always trying to find a way. Oh, yo, they ain't, they not, uh, they didn't wash their hands before they ate. You know, always trying to find a way. And, and Yeshua told them, look, you worried about them washing their hands but yet you ain't even keeping the father's laws. You ain't even keeping the Torah. You around here talking about them. And so when we look here in Mark chapter 6, 10, and 11, when you're sharing the truth in love with the spirit of gentleness, gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. And thank you, Penny, for bringing that out. Oh, you welcome. When you share the truth with someone and you show them in scripture, you show them the error of their ways and they still don't want to repent, they still don't want to receive you. They tell you, get out of my face. I don't want to hear you. That's not for me. I'm not ready. Whatever the case may be. He didn't say, stand out there with a bullhorn. Tell them they're going to hell. Tell them that hate the white man. Tell them that you. He didn't say, go out there and curse them out. What did he say to do? He said, what? Shake off the dust from under your feet for a testimony. You're a witness against them that the truth came to them and they rejected truth he says truly i say to you it will be more tranquil meaning more peaceful for sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city we know that there was no peace in sodom and gomorrah when his judgment came on them okay he says it will be more peaceful for sodom and gomorrah than a city of place where when they come the truth came and they rejected the truth and i'm hoping that we're really clearing this up so stop with the you can't judge me if you calling yourself a believer then yes if you are an atheist then no i can't judge you so those of you who say you can't judge me are you an atheist next time somebody say that you can't judge me ask them well, are you an atheist do you consider yourself to build to be a believer do you believe the bible's authoritative word of god if you say yes then let me take you to the scriptures where it shows you that the bible that we do judge one another and he says you judge with a what righteous judgment a righteous judgment and so now we're going to come to a video um this is uh a, a audio clip from uh the tarnish awakening and it's going to give you more visual of what i've been saying about what's going on with our people and then i'm going to go into that video where i said earlier because of what you're getting ready to see right now, this is the reason why people think that we're in a cult. So we're going to watch this uh, clip and then we'll come right back. You people who call yourselves Hebrew Israelites are lacking some very fundamental understanding of how to awaken the lost sheep of Israel. You can't bully people into the kingdom by calling them B's and H's and telling them that they're a part of the two-thirds club. Yo, death to you white people, so-called white people. That's right. They're born into slavery. Uh-huh. Death. 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 You know, it's a terrible thing growing up knowing that people look down on our people and call us all kinds of names like nigger, jungle bunny, porch monkey, you know, names like that. 
It's also confusing that we can't seem to get it right as to who we are as a people. Some of us think we're Egyptian, some of us think we're Moors. We went from being called colored to Negro to black and now African American. Why can't we get it right? Who are we? And what is our true identity? The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that the curses will be on the children of Israel as a sign to the whole world. There will be no mistake as to who they are if you're looking at biblical prophecy. The Bible says that the curses will be placed upon his people as a sign of who they are and a testament of their disobedience to him. Righteousness seems to have escaped every nation upon this earth, so no one group of people can claim total righteousness. Everyone seems to be trying to figure out who are the chosen people of the Bible, but no one wants to even consider what the Bible says about them and what condition they would be in in the last days. One scripture actually talks about them coming to themselves and remembering who they are, thinking upon the Father's name and beginning to praise Him in the land of their captivity. Captivity? Wait, did it say the land of their captivity? Their slavery? We are the people of the scriptures, the true Israelites of the Bible. Our people are awakening to their true identity all around the world. But there is a huge problem. Some have turned the grace of Yah into lasciviousness and are tarnishing the awakening. What about our missing children? That's right. And it's part of you black women's fault. Right. You don't want to take the blame, but you're going to take the blame today. That's right. We tired of you trying to blame all the, put all the blame on the black man when you didn't threw the black man out the house. Right. You understand? You're going to take some of the blame. If you happen to walk by, you're going to get a bit of shock treatment. This scripture means that the white man is the devil. Shock talk meant to stir people of color into action. That's how Commander General Yohanna, head of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, describes weekly protests he leads outside of the shops at Liberty Place in Center City. This video taken by the ISUPK is posted on the school's website and on YouTube. He says he and members of his Christian Bible School are well within their First Amendment rights. But shop owners say they've heard enough. Today in court, their lawyers argued the group is trespassing. In addition, they say the group's offensive language frightens customers. They preach about how they hate white people, how they hate gays, how they, they, they're preaching calling women whores. I mean, really, really hostile kind of language that makes uh, people feel intimidated and fearful. And that's not protected by the First Amendment. We don't hate white people, but God hates white people. Commander General Johannes says members of his group have never physically harmed anyone. You white people can rest assured, we're not going to riot, we're not going to burn down your cities. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to fix black and Hispanic people. You can't honestly believe that the most high... Okay, so... Prina. Sis. Yeah, so... Your thoughts on uh, the video? <laughs> you know, um, they just, they make the most high look, and they make us look bad. The ones that's really coming to tr the truth. Mm -hmm. The one that's really out here, that's really um, sharing his word and love, that's sharing it with a gentle spirit. Mm -hmm. Then you have these people um over here yelling and screaming and cursing and mm -hmm. um, you know the most high said don't don't hate your brother and, no, and esau and if they esau call him esau does it that esau is a white man okay if that's the truth yeah if that's the truth true. then yes. he yeah. said that, that you should not hate esau because yeah. he is your brother
Yeah. So you still in violation of yes. the yeah. And you also a violation because he said that you are a foreigner in a strange land and you should not, you know, you you are oppressed. So you yes. should hating the foreigners. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah, because when we were in Egyptian, we were yes. in, in Egypt. Yes. We, treated, we were in kindness, especially when Joseph was there. Yes. You see what I'm saying? we're not the, the hatred and the oppression that they have you know go around that's like i told you i just unfriended somebody this week for the same yeah. reason mm -hmm. talking about the esau stuff i didn't know this person was like that and i'm like i, I don't have time for that yeah that hate speech this is the reason why no one can receive us now this is the reason why the father's word is looking we looking like we're in a cult yeah this is yeah. the reason why we're doing this teaching is because mm -hmm. we're trying to stop we're separating ourselves mm -hmm. He never called us in the Bible. Y'all did never call us Hebrew Israelites. No, he it's not. not. He mm -hmm. called us Israel. We were the children yes. of Israel. Mm -hmm. He referred to us maybe of Judah, if mm -hmm. Judah was um, a transgression or Ephraim. Yeah, but he yeah. never called us that. Mm -hmm. And as you get ready to see in this next video, we are. Our, his name is now blasphemed. Let me quickly yes. read this before yes. I go yes. into this. Yes. In Romans chapter 2, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning at verse 27. Yah has, and verse, I'm no, verse 17. Romans 2 and 17 reads Behold, you who are called an Israelite and trust in the Torah mm -hmm. and boast in Yah, and because you know his will and the things that must be observed, being instructed out of the Torah, and you have confidence in yourself that you are a guide of blind ones, a light to those in darkness, an instructor of foolish ones, a teacher of children. You consider yourself to be the pattern of knowledge and of the truth as embodied in the Torah. Now you teach others, but you fail to teach yourself. You preach that men should not steal, yet you steal. You preach that men should not commit adultery, and yet you commit adultery. You despise idols, and yet you rob temples. You are proud of the Torah. Be know your monkey chest stand out there screaming with your bullhorn with all the, the gods that he told us not to have to deal with, with that fake star of oh, oh, talking about the star of David, which yes. is the star of Rephraim, the star of your God. Here, there is no such star. It's a satanic star. Mm -hmm. But he says, you are proud of the Torah, yet you dishonor Yah through the breaking of the Torah. Mm -hmm. You make, the, he said, because of you, the name of Yah is blasphemed among yes. the nations, yes. even as it has been written. It's through our people. It is through those mm -hmm. that you saw in that video with all that Ninja Turtle outfit. You don't have to dress like that. Yeah. You don't have to dress like that to share the truth. You don't have to stand out there with a bullhorn on, screaming at people, cursing, using all kind of vulgarity. And you think someone's going to listen to you, just like the gentleman said, you scaring people. Yeah. That I'm, I'm here to say, anybody who has seen me and, and uh, with our teachings on YouTube, with my... Um, teachings that I do on social media, Facebook or whatever, you have not ever seen me using profanity, me using harsh language. Because you can, you can use harsh language without cursing. Yeah. I'm talking about vulgarity, perverse language. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you will not bring in anybody. You will not draw those that know nothing about Abba Yah into the truth using scriptures and cursing they stand out there screaming at people using scriptures and cursing at the same time i've seen israelites try to actually justify using profanity and then say well he is no so it's not a sin a curse he says that let everything come out of your mouth be used to edify and build up if what you're saying is not edifying and building up anybody, what are you using it for? Would you, you sure I'd be going around just speaking like that? Do you think that's language they're going to be using in the kingdom? 
for those of you newsflash and many israelites are racist yeah i get why you're upset because we've been oppressed but at the end of the day like i told many people we are in this situation yeah because our forefathers sin against the father yah we yeah. enter our forefathers enter into a covenant an everlasting covenant and walked away from the covenant this is a reason why we are suffering the curses yeah. of Deuteronomy 28. Stop blaming a white man. A white man don't have nothing to do with it. It's your stiff neck forefathers is yeah. the reason why we in there. And your stiff neck behind is the reason why you continue mm -hmm. to pass on generational curses because you refuse to repent. And I, I just want to say, um, it's in one of the scriptures, I can't remember it, but it's just on the top of um, tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. Where Yah says that he was the one that caused us to go into slavery. He yes. was the one that caused all these things to befall us because, like you said, we stepped away from the covenant. Yes. And Deuteronomy 28, um, for, um, 46, I mean, 45 and 46, tell us that we was going to be a sign and a wonder. Yes. But yeah, we are. Our, a by our, word, everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. I yes. mean, is um this video that we can ready to play next is a, very, a reason why I'm playing it because this is a you know a well known um you know uh, teaching channel mm -hmm. on YouTube on Facebook. Many people know. Many of you, when you see this um, audio clip, you're gonna know who they are. And they just recently did a video on the black what they call them, the black Hebrew Israelites, and they kept all throughout the video kept referring to us. This is I'm all, I don't need. Uh, gonna play a clip for six minutes i'm not playing the whole thing it's 21 minutes i only did the first six minutes of the video so that you can see it and then we're gonna show you why i understand why he's saying the things that he's saying because i just got finished reading you in romans chapter two it is because of what you saw earlier in that video the yelling the screaming the cursing sound out there i probably god does not teach hatred of other nations yeah he doesn't teach it he is he hates unrighteousness mm -hmm. there will be those who um are not israel they will be saved too they will be in the kingdom too they will have the opportunity for salvation and those of you who are going around teaching that nobody's going to be saved with, with us you are a liar and the truth is not in you you have nothing to do with the true faith those you are saying that a woman can't teach and that he's only speaking through men because of the hatred that they display yeah the white so-called white men they display that same hatred towards our women towards the daughters of zion they hate the daughters of zion just like the gentleman said that it's okay for the for the black woman to be raped they hate the daughters of Zion. They want us to shut up and sit in the corner, don't teach. They don't even want you to learn the word. The word. Y'all said I will pour out in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on on my sons and my daughters. Yes. Women were used mightily in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Deborah led. She was a judge, and she led all of Israel. All of Israel, men and women, came to her for judgment. So. The, what do judges do? They interpret the law. Yeah. You got to know the law to be able to interpret what it says. Come on now. If you don't know the truth about the roles of women, you better go back into our um, our um, Daughter of Yah channel and go back, can, can a woman teach? So let's watch this quick six-minute clip. Is going to give us understanding of why people think that we're in a cult. When I first came in the truth, my family thought that I was in a cult too. Now they see and they know I have been able to share the truth of, of, of Yah word and the true faith in love with the spirit of gentleness and through my walk, how I live my life according to the word, it lines up. I've yeah, been able yeah. to draw people in. Y'all have allowed me through my life and through the teacher ministries given to me to be able to enlighten and wake those up. Mm -hmm. There's people who didn't know nothing about the truth of y'all did now. They're walking in the truth. I have people come to me all the time because they see how I share it. And I'm not coming harsh. I'm not coming 
to try to condemn nobody. I knew I was blind at one time too. There are times when I'm given a word and I have to deliver in a way where some people may be offended because it's the truth, but I'm still going to share it. Yeah. So let's watch this. You may recognize this ministry and we I want to give a disclaimer. This is not to uh, debate with them. This is not a rebuttal video. This is just to basically say, this is a reason per Romans 2, why the father says his name is blasphemed among the other nations Well, other people. He, this, this man, although they teach a lot of truth on their channel, they're wrong about this. They don't know that we are the chosen people. Uh, some of the scriptures he used to try to refute to say that we're not the chosen people. He has no understanding. It was, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was done in a, it, the, the way that he explained the scriptures, I can tell that he really did. He explained it as best as he could, but it wasn't the truth. Okay. The awakening is not, no one is going to be able to stop the awakening. No. And he's referring to us as a black Hebrew Israelites and Africans who we are not. And so, um, just we'll listen to this and we'll come back. Recently, there was a huge story in the news about some high school kids taunting and surrounding an elderly Native American man in front of the Lincoln Memorial. This story was based on a short video clip that went viral, resulting in harsh condemnation of these kids as racists. But as it turns out, the whole story was a fabrication. Full footage of the incident surfaced, showing that the high school kids didn't taunt or surround the Native American at all. They were singing school spirit chants as the man pushed himself in the middle of their group. The kids continued their pep rally style cheers, and one of the kids nervously smiled as the Native American man played his drum inches from the kid's face. For this, the kids were called racists. Basically, these kids were smeared with a false narrative contrived from an out of context video clip. But why were these kids randomly singing school spirit chants in front of the Lincoln Memorial to begin with? As we can see in the full footage of this controversial encounter, there was a group of men screaming taunts and insults at the children as the children waited for their school bus. So the kids apparently decided they would sing their school chants to drown out the hateful insults being hurled at them by this group. That's right, this entire controversy was sparked by a small group harassing these high school kids. This group was later identified as the Black Hebrew Israelites. Since this story broke, a lot of questions have arisen about this group. What did they believe? and their cause. In this teaching, we're going to attempt to offer some clarification as well as address their errant and dangerous teachings. The first thing to be aware of is that this group is apparently not monolithic, and they go by different names. For instance, they might be called the African Hebrew Israelites, or Black Hebrews, or Black Israelites. Sects within their movement differ widely in their beliefs. For instance, some reject the Messiah and New Testament altogether, while Others claim to follow the Messiah and the New Testament. Among those who follow the New Testament, some groups reject Paul's letters. Some groups believe that the King James Version of the Bible is the authoritative English translation. So there are a lot of differences. However, the one thing they all seem to have in common is the belief that African Americans are the true descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Other ethnicities, such as Puerto Ricans and Native Americans, might also be descended from the tribes of Israel, according to some black Hebrew Israelite groups. The primary goal of black Hebrew Israelites is to reach out to those whom they believe to be the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel and convince them of their heritage. One black Hebrew Israelite community known as the House of Israel writes, Our chief mission is the uplifting of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who are the 12 tribes of Israel through edification, news, and practical knowledge sharing. We currently are expanding throughout the continental U.S., bringing the word of the Lord to our brothers and sisters. We are told to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and bid them to the marriage, which is coming back to the fold in raising up a nation under the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Many of the more radical members of these black Hebrew Israelite groups relentlessly proclaim that the Jewish people aren't true Jews, but imposters from the synagogue of Satan. They will promote racist views against white people and Jews, often standing on streets and sidewalks and yelling at anyone who walks by. 
Since many black Hebrew Israelites spout extreme violent, racist, and anti-Semitic rhetoric, organizations like the Southern Poverty Law Center and Anti-Defamation League have classified some black Hebrew Israelite groups, like the House of Israel, as hate groups. Lastly, and unfortunately, because black Hebrew Israelites hold to a belief that they are the true descendants of the lost tribes of Israel, many of them practice aspects of the Torah, such as the Sabbath and dietary laws. We say unfortunately because nothing about the theology or actions of this group reflects the true heart of Torah observance. So the fact that they claim Torah observance hurts the reputation of those who keep the Torah out of love for God and our neighbor. A good comparison would be the Westboro Baptist Church, a hate group out of Topeka, Kansas, who travels around the country to protest at funerals. Through their false doctrine and hateful actions, they give all Christians a bad name because of the actions and beliefs of a few hypocritical bigots in a fringe cult. Genuine believers are smeared as bigots as well. It's the same case with the black Hebrew Israelites. They are not genuine believers. They don't really keep the Torah. The Torah is based on loving others and loving Yahweh. They are employing racist behaviors, sadly exposing them as frauds. Before we move forward, it's important to clarify that black Hebrew Israelites have no connection historically or theologically with Ethiopian Jews, who are legitimate Jews. So where do black Hebrew Israelites get this idea that they are the true Jews or true descendants of the lost tribes of Israel? This belief is primarily based on a misinterpretation of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Black Hebrew Israelites assert that this verse is a prophecy about the transatlantic slave trade, which was the transportation of African slaves to the Americas on ships between the 16th to 19th centuries. Okay. Uh, Prina. Yes, I'm in. Okay. So... I have some points I want to make. You can, if you have any, you, you can go ahead and start. Okay, so um, first off, I just want to say that um, just as well as our fathers inherited lies, so have their fathers her, her, inherited lies. Yeah, thank you. That's a wonderful point. Yeah. You know, and so they are going to be strong in believing that they are the so called Jews. Mm -hmm. But as you were saying, that and the let most. Me say this. We are not Jews. Yes, no. I'm saying they saying they're yes. They I know we're not Judah. Jews. They yes. think that they're Judah, yes, they're chosen people, yes. and they are not. But I'll give them, because Jew is not there. Is first of all the letter J is not in the Hebrew yes. or the Latin. There is J is the letter J is the last letter of the alphabet and is only 500 years old. There was yes. no one being called a Jew back then, but they believe that they had to get, that they're Yehuda, that they're from yes. the chosen mm -hmm. tribe, the same tribe as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought that. That was excellent. That they have inherited lies as well. Yes, but what what we need to just uh, state that them and us, you know, Yah, like you said, Yah is is keeping his promise that he told Abraham in Genesis 15 and um, 14, when he told them that, you know, that he, they're going to come out with great substance that, you know, he's going to repay those for the ones that uh, mistreated them during their captivity. Yes. And, and so this is, this is, it's, it's coming. His prophecy, his word is true. It's coming. It's coming to, um, it's coming to pass. Yeah, and, yeah. And you know the Ezekiel, uh, the Valley of the Dry Bones. You know, is, yeah. yes, Ezekiel, yes. And so, what we have to remember is Psalm um, eighty-three, um, one through five. Um, uh, and I'm gonna read it. It says, "Keep not thou silent, O Yah. Hold not thy peace. Be not still, O Yah. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. A tumult. They, yeah. A tumult." And they have hate thee with, um, they have hated thee and have lifted the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted, and I mean, consulted against, uh, against the hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. The name of Israel be no more in a remembrance. They have consulted together with one consent. They have they are a confederate against thee. So, I mean, if you, just looking at this, you know they took crafty counsel. 
In Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48, we know that they laid open the books to change the images. Yes, they did. Uh, and they're uh, doing that. And so yes. why change the image if we not the people? Yes, why are you changing all our point, images? That's the point that I'm trying to make. Why would someone go through great lengths to hide yes. our history? Yes, you know, yes. That is not, you, you're not going to hide, you're not going to, you know, if you are the true people, you don't need to hide. No. Uh, uh, and, and make a facade, you know, mm -hmm. because when, when our people were coming over here on them slave ship, they were singing Kumbaya. They yeah. were singing Kumbaya. They knew um, the, the Hebrew language. They, yes, they did. They knew who they, who they Abba was. Yes, they beat it out of them and refused. Yes, That's why they, they, we they couldn't read the Bible them, when we came over. Yes, here. they gave them a slave Bible. And all the slave names, let me say, if you yes. haven't seen the slave and bank where it has a list of the slaves, they all had Yah at the end of their name. Yes, they did. They, and, they, and this ain't no, and I wish I, I would have put that in this PowerPoint, but they all had the name of Yah. Okay, mm -hmm. in their names at the yeah. end of their names, and when yeah. you look at that, this the, you know he he like Prina said has been deceived and has mm -hmm. inherited lies. He mm -hmm. said that the black Hebrew Israelites. He just kept saying that over and over. It was almost sounding like a curse word to just keep saying. I don't know. If yes, you know, but I did too. But yes, he said they have no connection to the European. Yes, Jews, who are the true chosen people. First of all, if you open up your Bible to Genesis chapter 10 and yes. look at the genealogy because see our people don't like history and I yeah. used to be one of the people that didn't like history mm -hmm. until I, I started like coming either. into the truth mm -hmm. and when you open up your Bible to Genesis chapter 10 it gives you the tables of yeah. all the nations and where we come from when once Yah destroyed the previous earth and the earth was repopulated with Noah and his three sons yeah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth when you read Genesis chapter 10 and it says Verse 1, and these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, and the sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomar, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. And Gomer's sons was Ashkenaz, Rithkath, and Togomar. And Javan's sons were Elijah, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the coasts of the, the nations, or the um, these were the coasts of the nations who were divided in their land, each by his own mm -hmm. tongue and by their families and the nations. These were the Gentiles. Yes. Some of your Bibles may say nations or Gentiles. Mm -hmm. These were the Gentiles. And it tells you mm -hmm. that Japheth came from the Gentiles. Yeah. The Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Japheth was from the Gentiles. Look at verse 2. It gives Japheth genealogy. And it says that these were the Gentiles. Okay? So they go by. Those who are claiming to be the true chosen people of the Bible, they're claiming that they're his chosen people, the European Jews. Those people over there in Palestine, everybody good, know good and well that they are not yeah. the true chosen people. Mm -hmm. We know how they really got over in that yeah. land. Yeah. This was all about war. Yeah. This was an exchange an exchange. This was yeah. this all the prophecy. See, this is what see, let 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 he, the word of y'all be true and every man a liar. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have to when you know the Bible. I when I watched that this audio clip, because if you want to watch, you can watch the whole thing on YouTube. But I only gave you the first six minutes. When you know the Bible, nobody can come along. And I'm not, this is not a rebuttal. And let me say, yes. this, this is not a rebuttal. This is not for me to be contentious or to speak against this teaching ministry because they do have some excellent teachings and I've listened to them. But this one they got wrong and it is innocence. They like Prina started off and I'm glad you said that, that as our fathers have inherited lies, so have theirs. Many of them truly believe that they are. But what yes. they're saying, that them being the chosen people, it doesn't align up with scripture. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. line up. He's saying that the curses of Deuteronomy 28, that's not, we don't, all of those curses haven't come to pass. He tried to use verse 68 with the ships. How yeah. we were those ships, we were slaves for a year, that that didn't happen to us. He tried to attribute it to someone else. I'm like, no other nation of people. 
Yes, had like, 400 no, years of slavery. Yeah, no one that, and it's like, when the Father God gives you the word, and we're the, yes. earth, the, the, the true, when the, when the people, when the true people go back to the land, he says that there will be war, we will study war no more. There will be no more war. Yeah. We see yeah. war, rumors of war, it's all kind of chaos. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at what's happening over there in Israel right now. Look at all yes. the fighting and the turmoil mm -hmm. and the war. You trying to tell me no people over there with all that going on? Yes. When two people get back in the land, the land will be cleansed. Yes. From all of the uncleanness from the Gentile heathen nations. The land, mm -hmm. we will be at peace. Mm -hmm. We will be living in the land with our Messiah. He said that he scattered us. Yeah. And he who scattered us will so gather. gather us from the four corners of the earth. Nowhere in scripture did it say that you will make a pact. Yeah. Get back in the land yeah. mm -hmm. and of, of where you never belong in the in the first place. They and said I think, they returned back in the land in 1948, and that fulfilled yes. the prophecy. That didn't fulfill the prophecy. No. Look what's going on in the world yeah, today. Exactly. The and the Messiah haven't came. Yet. The world will be in when we return back to the land. Mm -hmm. When you know what the word of y'all says, yes. nothing that nobody come up and say mm -hmm. will be able to change that. Yeah. He tried, yeah. bless his heart, but yes. a big fail. And, and I want to say this, if if they are the ones, then Messiah would have came and war would have been. Yes, when he, he with, would be with, here. With Satan, and yes. we would be reigning and ruling, okay? Yes, and that so, and has not happened. I have and, that's a, and I just want to say this too. They wouldn't have Willie Lynch letters. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have gave a slave Bible. They wouldn't have given us Christianity, and they wouldn't have removed the Bibles that was pivotal for us to know who we are, such as Jasher, Maccabees, uh, Enoch. You know, they, they wouldn't have taken all of the scriptures. Yeah. They yes, would, they wouldn't yeah. have took those out. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't they have taken them out. They would have changed all the images. We all know that the yes. Egyptians. The Messiah would not have been able to hide in a land yes. that was all European. Yes. He wouldn't yes. have been able to hide. Everyone yes. knows that the Egyptians were a dark-skinned nation of people. We yes. are not. Yes. We come from Shem. Yeah. We're not anti-Semitic because this is not Sim. It's Shem. S-H-E-M. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We come from the line of Shem. Yes. Our forefathers are not Ham. Ham, the Egyptians, um, they and they enslaved us. Ham, though they enslaved us, we are two. There's, there's a two different dark skinned nations, according to the yeah. Zondervan mm -hmm. Bible. Two different dark skinned nations of people. Mm -hmm. We are not the same. It is, and it says specifically that it is not the Negroes. Yes. We are not them. Africans yeah. will tell you in a minute that we Africans are African. We are not the same two people. Yeah. Everybody, Prina had yeah. another other nation. Well, what she was Asian woman. Yeah, I she had was an Asian. Arab tell me the truth. I had someone who was a so-called Jew yeah. tell me you like we're not the chosen people. And I said, I know we are. He said, Oh, you know. They know. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. But one well, of my professors, you know, she was she was um angry. Uh, you know, she thought I was in a grad school because you know I, the class that I was taking was grad and half uh, undergrad. Mm -hmm. And so it was this one part of the assignment that was specifically for grads. And so she was, so she was like, oh, you started out with an AMI class. Now you don't slacked off because you gave you, I gave you, you know, give, mm -hmm. giving me, you know, recognition for the A. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you people don't even know who you are. And I'm like, uh, I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. well, let's call the press. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she knew when I said it, she knew because it, it pierced her because of the way she looked at me mm -hmm. and I said I'm not you mistaken that I'm not a grad I'm I'm an undergrad so she had to change my grade remember mm. I told you that yeah yeah you the know, fact that she even said I mean I had I air, air, I had basically air. calling us lazy that's what she, mm -hmm. that's what she was trying to hint to mm -hmm. like you know you making it and then, then now you're gonna slack off like, mm -hmm. slack off, like I'm lazy mm -hmm. you people don't even know who you are We've had other nations of people. I've had Arabs tell us who are Ishmael. I've had, um, and they're and they're Hebrews too. Yes. But you don't call them Hebrew Arabs. 
No. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Fa- Abraham is the father of many nations. The father never called us Hebrew Israelite. There's such, no such thing as black Hebrew Israelite. Black is a color of a crayon, yeah. number one. We were never called yeah. a black Hebrew Israelite. You can't find it in there. So him to keep using this over and over in the video is an insult to try to lump us all into one and to say the black Hebrew. Okay, what he's saying is some of them don't believe in the Torah. That is true. Yes. Some of them don't keep observe the Torah. That is true. True. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They're they're the, some of the biggest fornicators that I've ever seen. You know, mm-hmm. they got the hair wrap. They got on the Hebrew outfit. They can speak fluent Hebrew. They can write fluent Hebrew. They can have all the feasts, keep the Sabbath, but yet they're fornicating. Mm-hmm. Yet they're believing in you know sex and marriage, all kind of foolishness. And so, the fact that he's trying to lump everybody and say if you believe that you're the chosen people, that that means you're a black Hebrew Israelite, you're a part of this hate group. We don't have anything to do with them. Yeah, they are paid yeah. agents. Yeah. They're being paid. Mm-hmm. by the people that are creating these videos to stand out here on the corner and to tank and tarnish the true faith because they yeah. know that we are waking up yeah. and there is nothing that they can do about it. But the point is, Israel, Yes. just because we're waking up, we have to awaken to righteousness. Mm-hmm. We have to share the truth. And that's why I said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Yeah. We have to share the truth of the Father's word in love and with a spirit of gentleness. Yes. We cannot be overbearing. Mm-hmm. You can't, if you're not walking in love, you show no mercy. You show no compassion. Do not go around talking about hate the white man because there will be white people or Caucasian or whoever, other nations of people that will be there. Yes. We did the teaching before, and I've heard other people try to teach and try to say what well, he said. That we're not supposed to be with a white person, this, blah, blah, blah. The whole point of that whole thing, it's not about skin color. It's about the nation. Yeah. It's it's not, a, he told us to stay away from these other nations. The nations he told us to stay away from was because it was going to turn their hearts away from it. It wasn't just really stay away from them because they, they are different skin color than you. It's because they're going to turn your hearts away from me because yes. of the gods that they were serving. Just like they turned Solomon's heart away from the Father God. Yeah. It's, we got to get away. Stop looking at skin. There are people who may look white that may be Israel. We come yeah. in all shades. Yeah. All shades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not, I'm not here to promote um, um, oh, interracial dating because I show enough and I'm not. Trust and believe I'm not. I'm for our people. 100. But I am for those who do the will of the Father. He said, who is your brother? Who is your sister? Who is your family? Those who do the will of Yah, that's your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If somebody is Caucasian and they doing the will of Yah, that's my sister. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you out here teaching the truth of the Father's word and you're trying to turn people away from the era of sin and trying to save their soul and you giving a thought and care, you are my brother. Yeah. I don't care what color you are. We do not promote or teach or endorse hatred yeah. of anyone. Mm-hmm. I support those who love the Father, yeah, and I'm talking about loving him through their actions. Yeah. Because love is keeping his commandments. Mm-hmm. There are so many people in Israel that will not see the kingdom, that will be cut off because of their hatred. Yeah. Yah is not for going around hating somebody just on the color of their skin. He said that he will repay. Vengeance is his. Yeshua yeah. said, pray for your enemies, love your mm-hmm. enemies. Mm-hmm. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Our people took part in killing him. Know that. Yes. Our people, the Pharisees, were standing right there. Tell them, keep Barabbas alive and kill him, crucify him. Our people was took part in that. Stop going around talking about always talking about hating the white man. The white man is not the reason why your stiff neck butt is in this position. Yes. You're in this position because you stepped away from the covenant. Our mm-hmm. forefathers turned away from the Father God. That's why we're in this position. Mm-hmm. We're not in this position 
because of the color of our skin. That's not why we he, we got our butt shipped over here to America. How do you think we got over here? Yeah. Why yeah. do you think that he's allowing them to continue to, to continue to oppress us? Because we didn't take joy in keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. So he's going to allow them to punish you. When a, when the man in this video said, oh, well, he says you don't have a buyer. Then he said, oh, well, they had plenty of people who bought them all over. We know that. Every yeah. nation took part, including the so-called Africans that you keep yeah. calling us and saying that we are, but we're not. Yeah. That's how they want to just lump us all up into this one shape. We are mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. There's no other nation of people on the earth that fits the curses, and all of the curses have not come to pass. They're continuing to come to pass. Yes. But you, your people are not on the bottom, mm -hmm. and your people are not the lenders. No. I mean, I'm not the borrower. borrower. No. Mm -mm. Your and children are not on street corners. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. your, mm -hmm. your people wasn't had a yoke of iron around their neck no. and put on slave ship for 400 years. Your nation, well, your, nation, your, your, your ancestors were not brought to a land that they never know. They mm -hmm. wasn't brought over to a land by a nation whose symbol was an eagle. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. You, 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 they reaching, they was reaching with this video, trying yeah. to prove that we not the people. Yeah. You ain't go deep enough. Yeah. You, you did surface scripture. You, you, if you say the European Ashkenazi Jews are the people, well, then what is Genesis 10? The table of the nations say. Yeah. We're not here to say and boast or brag and being better or anything because we're humble here. We're here to say, you can't take away the what we know we, yeah. we know who we are in the messiah now it's no video that no and i know because the father woke me up yeah he brought me into this truth nobody brought me into this truth yah the father when i cried out to him and said i want to know who you are he told me the truth of who i was and nobody i don't care what video they come out you it's ingrained in us yes Yes. Why is everybody trying to be like us? Mm -hmm. Why is everybody trying to steal our DNA? Our mm -hmm. DNA, it was already said that we are the original people. Mm -hmm. We don't have to try to act like he said that it's unfortunate that we like we trying to act like we we are the people. Yeah. Yeah. We just got some knuckleheads standing out here. Yeah. Like they everybody pay, family does. Pay for money. Yeah. They, they are reprobates, they sellouts. Mm -hmm. But know this, just as it was in the days of Israel, when Moses had to look, we're going to already draw the line in the sand. Yeah. That's around mm -hmm. that cap. Who for y'all stand on this side and whoever not, you stand on that side and y'all say, look, go kill your brother. Mm -hmm. We get ready to duel this thing out here. Mm hmm we they had to make a choice choose this day who you gonna serve if this was amongst the israelites themselves it's the same divide and the same line right now that's yeah. being drawn in the sand we are separating ourselves yeah. those who are truly serving you are separating ourselves mm -hmm. from those who claim to be the people who are tainting the faith who are making the father's name blaspheme among the heathen they are a complete embarrassment yeah, the faith. they have nothing to do with the faith. There, he says, examine yourself to see if they're in the faith. They're not in the faith. Don't try to lump, don't do no video on me and try to lump me in with them. I'm not no black Hebrew Israelite. I am yeah. Israel. Blood Israel flowing through my veins. Mm -hmm. Per my Abaya, per his word. Mm -hmm. He didn't go deep enough in this video. Yeah, he, he did. surfaced and then he misused scripture yeah. to try to prove that we not. Yeah. The yeah. truth will be revealed in the end. Mm -hmm. All will see and know then that I have always loved you. Yes. Yes. Praise you. You know, and it, again, you know, as as we inherited lies, so have he, and and Yah is gonna start. It's, he's clearing it up. He, you're not gonna see. No matter what you do or say. Well, whatever video he put out, and whatever the the our so called awakened brothers <laughs> and sisters, you can't stop what Yah has prophesied. You can't stop it. His, no, it's gonna happen, and it's it gonna happen, happen, and it's gonna come to pass. 
no matter how you hide, no matter how you sweep it under the rug, no matter how much you paste somebody to taint, it's not going to work because Yah is almighty and he's he's allowing it now, but you better believe his word is going to come to pass. His word is going to go. Yes. Definitely. And I, one thing I wanted to say, and I'm moving past this, because I just yeah. wanted to just have us make the difference from this. Um, for those of you who are in this walk, let me say this, and you're sharing the truth, because this was placed on my heart. And as it pertains to Am I My Brother's Keeper, in some sense, okay, in some senses, you are not your brother's keepers. Because, and what I, what I mean by saying that everyone must, everyone must bear their own responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, before, when they stand before the Almighty Father, Yah. Everybody has to bear their own responsibility. And your obedience to Yah it has to be personally rendered. It has to be personally rendered. What I mean is no matter how holy your mother or your, and I'm, and I'm pausing because I'm trying to get my words, no matter how holy you, your mother or your father is, in the end, at the end of the day, you're going to have to give an account for how you chose to live your life. Yeah. Your mother cannot live a righteous life for you. Your father cannot live a righteous life for you. No one can secure the salvation of another. Mm -hmm. Okay? No one can secure the salvation of another just as so long as that person chooses. And the key word is chooses. So mm -hmm. long as that person continue or chooses to continue in disobedience. Yeah. Is it a blessing? To have a brother or sister to bear your name when they when they're praying when you got when you got a brother or sister that's bearing your name on their heart they're praying for you daily that is a blessing but again at the end of the day you have to choose okay yeah. you have to choose to run to y'all you have to choose to draw near to y'all in your heart your parents cannot convert you let me say this again. Your parents cannot convert you and vice versa, children. You cannot convert your parent. This was laid on my heart this morning. You, parents, listen, because I know if it's, I'm a parent, oftentimes we feel and bear the burden for our children. Yes. You cannot labor and i'm talking to my parents or vice versa but you cannot labor the responsibility of another person's soul upon you let me say this again you cannot labor the responsibility of another person's soul upon you upon your, your child so in fact it is a dangerous act to enter into a covenant or to vow a vow to Yah on behalf of someone else in the hopes that they might repent and turn to Yah. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. Mm -hmm. I, when I had my son, and I'm sharing my own personal testimony, I prayed and I prayed for my son and I dedicated my son to Yah. And I made a vow to Yah that I would train him up in his ways that whatever truth he's given to me, with the knowledge that I have, I would give to my son. And I pray all the time that my son will have a heart after Yah. I pray all the time that my son would love him as much as me, if not more than me. But I cannot make a vow to Yah in the hopes that my son We'll, we'll keep it. I can't do it. That's a dangerous thing. We yeah. cannot do that. Yeah. We can't do it. You are not responsible for turning hearts of stone to flesh. Okay? You cannot awaken sinners to life. Our responsibility 
that we have for our own salvation. That's enough right there. The, resp the responsibility we have for our own salvation, that's enough. Without us exaggerating the power that he has not given to us to do. We don't have the power to save anyone. We can, we can enter into a, a covenant with y'all and bow, but we can't bow a vow of salvation for someone else. This was yeah, placed yeah. on my heart this morning. Yeah. And so if after sharing the truth, they normally reject our Messiah, they would normally reject the faith, the faith of whom we faithfully have preached then the blood will be upon their own heads, as I stated earlier in Ezekiel 3 and 33. It's going to be upon their heads. But we, we, can't, we don't have the power. We can't, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. I pray that my son will love him. It would grieve me mightily if my son turned away. I would be grieved. I'd probably be like the five forefathers, ready to go out and pull up the grass, throw dirt on my head, mourning, fasting, because that is a time to mourn. That's why the father had a big celebration when the, his one son, who had not been serving him, came back. And the other one, like, well, you didn't have a celebration for me. And he like, you already been serving. Yeah, this one was lost, but now he's been found. That is cause for a celebration. Yeah. They have turned away from the error of their ways and they have come back into the fold. Didn't the Messiah say, if one is, I got 99 and one is lost, will I not go for that nine, that one? Will I not go for that one? Mm -hmm. We have to give it to Yah. This is something Yah has had to deal with me. And then I'm, we're going to, because we're going to end it. You can't leave like, Look, you can't save no one. You don't have the power to. I've given you gifts, and your gifts is to edify and to build up and to exhort, to warn, to encourage. The gift that I've given you is, as the scripture says in Ephesians, is to do what? To build up the body that we might come into the unity and come into what? The full knowledge of the Messiah. That's the whole purpose of the gifts. The gift is not to stand out on the corner and scream at people and curse people out and tell everybody that, that that's not us, that they're going to hell. That's not the purpose of the gifts. Our people, Israel, so-called African-Americans, you must repent. You have to repent. Christians, those of you who are listening, if you're a Christian, and you believe and ascribe to the teaching that the law is a law of Yah is done away with, that you really believe that you are only responsible for keeping part of his word. You believe that part of his word is dead, aka the, the law, the, the first, the, the oh, what you call the Old Testament. You need to repent because the Bible doesn't teach that. You don't find it anywhere in the scriptures. So you have to ask the question, where am I getting this from? Yeah. Where am I getting this nonsense from? Our people have to step away from my pastor said and look in there and see what the Father Yah and his word says. He tell you he didn't do away with the law, but you come talking about my pastor said. Now he getting ready to send a strong delusion. And you're going to believe that the lies are true because you take no pleasure in, in righteousness and take no pleasure in the truth. But you love lies. That's what he said Israel will be doing. Prophesy lies to us. Tell the prophets, we don't want to hear. Give us smooth things. We don't want the truth. We want lies. We want to be told we can ready to be blessed with a house and a car and lots of money as long as we tie and sow a seed and we're not even walking in righteousness. We're breaking all the commandments. We're fornicating. We're still at the club. We haven't changed our life, but we think we're getting ready to be blessed. Money is not blessings. Newsflash. Yeah. 
Joshua tells you that that success is keeping his commandments. That's mm -hmm. what true success is. Yes. Many people like to brag and boast. Oh, well, I got money. Well, we, just because you ain't come up, because your money is, you have not come up. <laughs> they call that the come up, because you got money. Mm -hmm. Everybody that serve y'all is not going to be rich. He says, though, that will follow the Messiah will be persecuted. You better go back to last week's teaching that we did. Your faith on trial. You, the come up is when you know who Yah is and come into the full knowledge of who the Messiah is. That's when you come up. When you in the kingdom and you hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the come up. The come up is when I can be in the presence of my brethren, be in the presence of the lamb, but the Yeshua and the father Yah and be able to see him face to face meaning aka to be in his presence yeah and to have everlasting life that's the come up if you hearing you living a good life on earth you rich you got money you got fame you have women you have all these things you think you have arrived yet you know not the father yet you are been disobedience and you die in your sins you rejected all of his messengers you have not come up. You may have come up in this world, but you have just lost. You ain't coming up. When it comes time for judgment, you're going down. You're going to hear, I never knew you. Depart from me. So you have to make a choice. Do you want to come up in this world? Or are you willing to come down? Humble yourself. Pray. Seek his face. Turn from your wicked ways. That he might hear from heaven. Maintain your cause. Israel, we got a lot of work to do. Those who are calling yourself awakened to the truth. Are you are awakened. You're talking about you where you in truth. The question is, is the truth in you? Yeah. Do you have any last words before I say this last scripture and then send us out? Since you said it all, so you can say, say the scripture. You said it all. Told I, yeah. So the last scripture, you look here, Revelations 14, 4 and 5. These are the ones who had not become defiled, for they are pure. Mm -hmm. These are the ones following the lamb wherever he may go. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to Yah and to the Lamb. And no decoy was found in their mouth, for they are what? Unmarked before the throne of Yah. I'm going to leave you with this. Cain was marked. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it there because I believe the Father Yah is going to give me more to this. I'll leave it there. Prina, if you want to lead us out with a okay. uh, scripture read. Yes, I'm reading 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 13 and verse 18. And David blessed Yah before the eyes of all the congregation. And David said, Blessed are you, O Yah, the power of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. To you, O Yah, be the greatness and the power and the high esteem and the victory and the majesty. For all in the heavens and the earth belongs to you. Oh, yeah, yours is the kingdom, and you lift up yourself to all his head. And the riches and the honor come before you, and you rule over all. And it, and it is in your hand to make, I'm sorry, and it is in your hand, I'm sorry, and, and, and in your hand is power and might. And it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now our power, we are giving thanks to you and giving praise to your high esteemed name, oh, yeah, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our Father, keep this forever for the intent of the thought of the heart of your people and prepare their heart toward you. In Yeshua's name, so be it. In Yeshua's name. So we thank you for joining us yes. for this uh, webinar teaching. We pray that it will bless you. Yes. We pray that those of you who were confused, you had questions, you thought that we were part of the Black Hebrew Israelite camps, 
my message is stay away from all these camps. Yeah. All of these camps are tainers and tarnishers of the faith. Mm -hmm. They have they don't keep the commandments, they don't walk in love, they don't share the truth with the spirit of gentleness, therefore, they do not exhibit the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are making the father's name blaspheme mm -hmm. among the heathen. They're the reason why people think we're in a cult and why they think that we're crazy mm -hmm. and that we're radical and we're this and blah, blah, blah. We have nothing to do with them. The faith yeah. of the father, yeah, is we, we're not in any, uh, we don't, we're not in any religion. We are members of the body of the Messiah. We mm -hmm. are Israel because that's just who we are. Yes. Mud descendant Israel, mm -hmm. according to the Bible. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the mystery that many, this is the reason why people are confused now with the scriptures because they don't know who true Israel is. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have inherited lies, as Prina said, as our fathers have inherited lies. But the one thing that is not a lie is that we are the chosen yes. people of the Bible. No matter what anybody say, they can't take away the truth of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Once you know the truth and you know who you are, nobody can come along and take that. I don't care what videos they come out with. Mm -hmm. You're not the truth will be revealed yes in time and very soon mm -hmm. the truth will be revealed and so yes. we want to thank you all for joining us mm -hmm. on today just know that those of you who are out there teaching the truth and love you're sharing the truth uh with the spirit of gentleness that you're out there warning and mm -hmm. correcting and yes. and those who need judging it's a righteous judgment mm -hmm. and that you are sharing this truth you're not being a hypocrite you're yeah. not posting scriptures one day and then cursing and at, at the same time you're not here i'm not out here teaching racism and hating white people or any other nation just based off the color of skin because everyone all are going to be welcome into the kingdom and they will have the opportunity to be saved yeah if they take hold to the covenant he yeah. had compassion and he um that those who were uh with israel or there were gentiles or strangers that was with us they were treated kindly they were not being mistreated and we don't go around and, and exhibiting a hateful spirit that's yeah. not showing the love of yah mm -hmm. no one can see the love and mm -hmm. you're going around with the foolishness that we see going on we have absolutely nothing that's why i don't put on none of that stuff that's why i don't do it because yeah. i don't want to be connected to it. i have nothing yeah. to do with it period yeah. Yeah, you and they operated them. just like the churches, you know. Yeah, you're just like, like the pastors overseeing, the, overseeing the yes. people. And they only, the only one that got the word. They, yes. you, they not the only one. You not the only one with the word. Yes, time to Israel to be humble. Yes, is because you're getting ready to be cut off. Why you worried about uh who get ready to be cut off from the other nations? You, none of them are getting in acting like that. If they yeah. don't repent, they not gonna yeah. be in either. Yeah, because he's gonna end up starting. Some of them are gonna be taken out. He's gonna be removing some of them very soon if they do not repent. Because he's not gonna continue to have his name be smeared. Yeah, like it is right now. It it mm -hmm. I cringe when I saw that video. I understood it. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it, mm -hmm. it it made me a little angry. But I wasn't angry at them because you can only go based off what you see. They don't yeah. see enough yeah. of us like how mm -hmm. we are out here doing this. There yeah. are plenty of righteous Israelite teachers who are actually going out here teaching the truth, and they're yeah. willing to teach the other nations as well. Yeah. But first, it's going to our people. So we just yeah. give all praises be to Yah. We yeah. thank you for joining us. Next uh, Shabbat, we will not be having uh, a teaching. Uh, Prina is getting ready to be available. <laughs> she got another grandbaby on the way, so she's not going to be available. And so we're going to just take a brief break, and we will probably be back the following Shabbat. So we thank you. May Yah bless and keep thee. May he make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. May he lift up his countenance upon thee and bring thee peace. Shabbat shalom. Anyone want to Shabbat reach shalom. out to us? Mm -hmm. This is our servants of Yah. Uh, email address. Send us an email. Any comments or questions and we will surely respond. May Yah keep you all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.